in my bag, boy. Please don't think it's sweet. I stay with the heat, even though I'm a sad boy. You better watch the way you breathe around me for the breath of your last boy. Hello guys, it is your boy Prince of Otis back here with another series, wonderful series might I add. Now if you read the title, you already know what I'm going for. Asta won't just have like, you know, sun breathing. He's going to be Yorichi's reincarnation because I wanted to try something new. And halfway through it, I did get bored, I'm not going to lie, but then I found a little bit of inspiration again. And I started to make characters interact more naturally than, you know, they would have been. Uh, before because it was getting a little bit weird like Asta is way too strong and it's hard to navigate like that But I found a way anyway, um, don't forget to like and subscribe hit the notification bell to Stay up to date on all my future videos though. They may be coming out a bit scarcely They will come out and I hope you will take the time out of your own day to give me some views Because making these is more fun when people give me more ideas on how to improve them and it's just more fun for me All right, uh, yeah without any further ado. Let's get into it like subscribe Let's go. A beautiful day rolls in on the Forsaken Kingdom as farmers carry on like usual, cultivating the land with their magic, which they took pride in despite being only commoners. As they did, one boy came walking past as they take notice of him. How goes it, Asta? You mind lending a hand? This is pretty hard. As he stops, Asta would say, Good morning, I love to help, I just need to get home first. He then carried on his way as the man stopped working, saying, I ever feel like that lad doesn't belong here. He has a noble aura about him. Hey, don't ruin Asta's chances out there, said her mother. You know how grouchy nobles are. Apologizing, they get back to work as Asta makes it home and is welcomed by Horo, the youngest of the orphans who live with him and the others doing their chores currently. And running to him and hugging his leg came Arlu who asked, Asta, can I come with you next time? With a smile, Asta knelt down, picking them up, both of them, putting them on his shoulders, saying, I'm not sure. Ah, you spoiled them too much, Nash said. Maybe I don't spoil you enough, replied Asta. Getting embarrassed, Nash would then say to shut up. How can you say stuff like that so casually? With a chuckle, Asta then lets them down, saying that he needs to go help some people. Of course you know. He's training again. You know how he is, Rekka said. Well, the ceremony is today, so I understand. I'll be right back. As he runs off, we then have a little time skip. As the sun begins to set, nobles, commoners, they all gather to the Grimoire Tower, flooding it and the deteriorating uh, you know, establishment. This tower is quite old. Asta came with his family like many, as you know, and him entered the pool of young mages as their family cheered them off from the sidelines. Welcome. As the Grimoire Tower Elder speaks, all noise stops as he wishes them luck in their endeavors, whether they wish to become the best in their respective field, help their parents, or become Wizard King. Seriously though, please try, said the old man. Now, let us begin. A bright light goes off, with the grimoires becoming enveloped with mana, and they start dropping in all sizes, colors, representing unique types of magic. Oh, I got a three leaf, as expected. Yes, me as well. This is what the you know the nobles would be saying, but the commoners are content with just one leaf or two leaves. Now I can finally head into the city and you know get out there. Well, I'm definitely taking over the family business with this. What do you expect, with the commoners? My father has already signed me up for a magic order. As they brag about this, the commoners are pissed but can't do anything when a large pulse of mana that explodes from two grimoires. One floats before Asta and one floats before Yuno. Impossible. That marking. Uh, they, they both have four leaf grimoires? It's the ones from the legend. I don't mind becoming the wizard king, said Yuno. Whoa, he, he's amazing. They're going to be the hope of this region. Girls start singing their praises and they're being told how cool they are, but Asta looks more so disappointed, even he himself doesn't know why, but he grabs his book, seeing a spell already, which has him tilting his head at it. Alright guys, let's go prepare a feast right now, yells Orsi. Yay, Asta and Yuno are awesome. But both of them though, said Nash. It's kind of ridiculous. Sister Lily, however, is the only one who takes notice of Asta's disposition and wonders what's wrong. Meanwhile, nobles are just in disbelief and the Grimoire Elder will then call out both of the boys to meet him while everyone clears out. After checking the Grimoires himself personally, he would then leave, uh, let them leave moments later and they make their way out the door and Yuna would say, You don't look happy. What's there to be happy about? As Yuna shows a slight discontent, he simply thought, You're always like this. Hey, you two. As the two turn, they see two angry nobles demanding they hand over their Grimoires. We're doing you a favor anyway. You don't deserve them. Stepping forward with a gentle smile, 
He even makes the men blush as Austin would say, sorry, if we bothered you, I'm sorry about that, but we have no intention of giving you a grimoire, so please kindly fuck off. Oh, I, what, what did you say? That side of you hasn't changed either, you know, said. What was that? Oh, nothing. Oh, by the way, watch out, said, you know. As you know, points to the nobles, Austin looks at them about to activate their magic with their respective elements, and he breathes in, causing a sharp sound to be heard as he disappears and appears behind the nobles, swinging down with his hands. And they're then sent flying back, uh, back, both crouching right beside Asta as he turns. I really don't like it when they force my hand. Come on, let's go, said, you know, we'll drown your guilt with food. Okay. As he walks forward and, you know, leads the way, however, from nowhere, chains bind Asta with, you know, quickly turning around with a nervous breath as Revchi appears. Ooh, four leaves. It's my lucky day. He would grab Asta's grimoire, saying well who he was and he says i was part of a magic knight order once you know now i'm just a wretched thief oh crap said you know this may sound weird but please run and drop that grimoire lifting an eyebrow to this the man said that his bluff was weak and he needed something stronger to like make him run when he then began to actually feel warmth a bizarre warmth and he then looks for the grimoire he was holding it heat increases even more as he screams letting it go and it falls back to asta who as you know it raises over his hanging head, says, Unbelievable. Inconceivable. There's no way. With the grunt, he shatters the chains, breaking out of them as his grimoire flips open to one page, and raising out of the, you know, the page, rises a hilt of a blade, which Asta instinctively grabs and gracefully pulls out. Sword, you know thought? This is the full form of Asta's fire magic. Uh, stay away from me! Releasing strands of chains, they violently whipped towards Asta, but raising his blade, Asta parried them with ease and swung forward once, and they were lit on fire and were sliced to nothing. What did you do? You just got your grimoire. You couldn't be that strong. As he marched forward, Asta said no words, only staring down the mage, whose face of fear turns to that of despair, and he is then split in half, bursting into flames as he screams. However, in actuality, he passed out and had just envisioned Asta's pure killing intent. Watching this, you know, sh just shuddered at the thought of facing that attack himself, thinking, Are you serious? He didn't even strike him. Asta, however, turns putting the blade away and saying that they should leave. It just... Magic Knight should have ordered. It's an embarrassment. What happened here? The two would then turn to see guards barge, uh, barge out and they see Refchi and seeing the two, they brighten up, thanking them for stopping this criminal that they've actually been chasing for a while. I guess nothing compares to... You know, four leaf fire magic, thank you. As they pick him up, the last would say, Oh, I don't have fire magic per se. I have, I just learned that it's actually sun magic. As he points up to the sun, this rare element combined with the rank of his grimoire only left them more amazed, with Yuno now finally knowing what he's working against. But Asta just smiles because now he finally knows the true horror of his power. In the following six months, they train. Well, Asta but he also wants to be the wizard king while also mentally holding himself back. See, Asta works in the ideal that no one should have too much power lest they lose control and become incorrigible monsters like he's seen nobles be for years. He also holds high status people quite accountable so that's why he was so pissed off when Reggie said he was a magic knight who became a thief. He doesn't know what to like do with himself so he finds it hypocritical to have such ideals as trying to become a wizard king, which is a high position of power, and fighting for it. This leads to him meeting his master Kruger, who nurtures his sword, but even he notices Asta's hesitation, but regardless, he teaches him, and they get along. Then Asta and Yuno head out and quickly reach the capital after a day, and inside the Colosseum, holding the magic knight exams, birds um, would flock about, bothering those they deem unfit of mana potency and capacity. Jeez, these things just won't stop. Why are they being left alone? Commoners and nobles look to Asta and you know who the birds stay clear of and they're left amazed with the female mages being in awe of their looks and stoicism. Asta looks so quiet and serene you would have mistaken him for a girl if not for the fact that he had an Adam's apple and a sharp jawline and also like a shit ton of muscles. He works out just the same as the original Asta if not more. What does he, why does he have a sword for though? Yeah, what a weird combination people wondered. As a gift from Kruger, Asta was given a hilt for his blade and took pride in it as he took, you know, he considers like a step to suppress his worldly desires. As long as I focus on the blade, I will never let my magic control me, he thought. 
Soon more than enough people gather and the magic birds disperse upon seeing and sensing the combined magic of the magic my captain. William then steps up and welcomes them before using his magic to make broom for all of them. He then has one of his subordinates demonstrate what they are supposed to do and upon picking up the brooms, some don't manage to even get off the ground that much. Some hover and some actually do fly, but Asta and you know, they soared. They have refined their control of mana, impressive for their age, Seth with Golion. They heal from the Forsaken Kingdom. Surprising, isn't it? asked William. The captains are taken aback from hearing this, but it only shows how much more stronger they are than their peers. The two boys chosen by the Grimoires of Luck. This will be interesting, thought William. Now, for the next test, everyone is shown a target of stone and they start to release volleys of, like, you know, infused with their elements and mana. And grabbing his blade, Asta would breathe in and step forward, thrusting. Sun magic. Sunflower thrust. A heat wave pulses out with the target exploding to ash in an instant, releasing a shockwave with Asta quickly reaching his blade. It's just insane. It's not even a trail. Did he say sun magic? Another attack is then released by Yuno taking everyone's attention as he renders his attack, uh, his um, target to rubble, and this only furthers the captain's interest in the two. I want that case, said Jack. He'd be a good sparring partner. That drawing style is similar to Hino Country style. Not Yami. Don't tell me. As he thought this though, the next portion of the test is brought up, that being the creation portion. Everyone starts to create the most meticulous object they can you know, think of while well, Asta holds his hand out and his grimoire would shine as four swords burst from, you know, nowhere to existence and are formed by incredible flames of heat that just being near made others back up. Damn, I hope I never get hit by a spell of that magnitude. We're not even that close and I can still feel the heat. I think we can all agree that he suits my squad best, Seth with Golion. Don't count your chickens till they hash, Yami said. He's not going to choose you anyway, said Nozo. I guess you're right, said Yami. The flying target test is then passed, and honestly, I'm not going to cover that part. And then finally comes the one-on-ones, which is held by Fuegolion. In this test, you will engage in actual combat, he said. You will decide your opponent, and you will fight. You may use your grimoires as well. Just show us what you're capable of. You should have a few spells by now. You've had your grimoires long enough. As they start to look around, many feel anxious as they feel they have to pick out their opponent very wisely. They don't want to lose in front of captains after all, but they don't want to like look like they were being cowards, not fighting people who were stronger than them or as strong as them. The first pair, however, does come and they start to duke it out as Asta is approached by a certain noble. Excuse me, would you want me to fight you? It seems these cowards are avoiding you, but to me, you're nothing but another commoner. That's song from the Assas family. Hey look, he's challenging the commoner. I would love to have a bow, said Asta. When the first fight is over, Psalm and Asta step up and are told to begin as the noble explodes with lightning, readying a spell that he slowly gathers with an enormous amount of mana, which astounds everyone. All you can do is wait for your destruction, huh? My lightning will spread you to pieces. How's it feel to be facing such great power? Staring blankly, Asta takes a step forward and begins to walk calmly with mana being released from his feet which pissed off some as he looked to you know way too calm and this was more than enough time for him to then fire a massive spear of lightning that begins to tear the ground as it nears the young protagonist why isn't he dodging he's gonna die this fight was over before it began thought nozo in the blink of an eye asta appears before some who's left shocked as asta unsheaths his blade sending the noble flying with just the hilt of his freaking blade like he didn't even hit him and the lightning bolt is uh severed in half. Psalm crashes into a pillar as everyone watches on in awe. He he beat him! The commoners present cheer in abundance at the noble not only being defied but humiliated. It's like they gained a win through Asta who would then start to bow and walk off only for you know to then beat him face to face. Got enough in you for another one? Oh they're gonna square off? Oh this is interesting. May I fight him too or is that not allowed? asked Asta. We did not get enough of your ability so Go ahead, says William. You know Grimoire instantly opens in that instant as he blitzes his brother with wind blades that Asta parries and cuts through with lightning quick drawing of his blade. He then moves forward, however, and, and in every sense of the word, he just cannot like move without you know trying to attack him in some way because he knows that letting Asta have even a little bit of opportunity is bad for him. So whenever he turns, he finds more blades that even he himself cut. He reform and then he has to cut them again and again. You think I wouldn't come up with some measure for that lightning quick speed of yours, you know, yells? Amazing, he cornered him. 
As the blade's near him though, Asta then raises his blade, saying, Sun Magic, Dragon Sun Halo Dance. In a moment no one would ever forget, Asta explodes with heat as a halo appears above his head before forming into a snarling flaming dragon. Meanwhile, he swings so fast that he is nothing but a blur and every strike burns through Yuno's wind and turns it to mist, which is then blown away to reveal a smiling Asta. He, he parried all of those blades? All of them? That's insane. Slamming his hand down, Yuno then releases crescent blades that rupture from the ground and then encircle and aim for Asta, but he simply jumps avoiding them only to see Yuno flying towards him as the voice screams, and with the swing, he fires his biggest attack. Wind magic. Wind fang. He releases a giant revolving mass of wind as the Colosseum would then shake with everyone but the captains fall into the floor, including their attendants. They're fine. They can control themselves. Did I get him? Yuno wondered. However, that wind is then unraveled with Asta being thrown once again as he readies his blade and thrusts slightly, tapping Yuno's chest with just the little tip of his blade. You did great, Yuno. God damn it, don't say that while you're smiling at me. He free falls and crashes on one knee while Asta gracefully lands with his dragon growing and wrapping around his waist, coming up for Asta to then pat it on the head. Thank you. With the nod, the dragon then fades and Asta is startled by claps and cheers. He could have gotten a hidden, but chose to show what he could do, except for Gullion. He's just... and meticulous. Wow, he cut his wind magic yells, bro? And those forms, they were so majestic, I would love to paint them. The artist in real goes a bit crazy, as he could only view every move Asta made as a perfect painting. It was just, like, magnificent. Asta, meanwhile, went and helped his brother up, who said, I'm not giving up because of this. Never expected you to. You made a promise, right? He holds his fist out and Yuno bumps it as they both say out loud and proud, whether it's today or tomorrow, through pain and sorrow, one of us will become the Wizard King. Wizard King? Is that what they just said? This promise hits people differently. Nobles are pissed and find it audacious, while some are excited to see their future. Time skip. A few hours pass and we see a portal form before the base of the Black Bulls, and from it walks out Asta in the setting sun following behind and then Yami and Finro and Gordon walk out as well. Welcome to the lowest of the low, okay, say Yami. As Asta smiles, a rumble is then heard with a giant explosion going off, blowing the gates of the base off its hinges as it falls at their feet. It's like they're trying to scare him away, thought Finro. Asta, however, just walks forward with everyone, uh, and they just like, you know, walk past the smoke, he doesn't really mind, and they come to find the Black Bulls in all their destructiveness. Wait, keep breaking shit, yells Yami as he releases a murderous aura, and this instantly stops everyone from fighting, and they're gathered before him obediently. This shrimp here is your new junior. Don't haze him so hard that he dies. I hail from the village of Hodge in the Forsaken Realm. Good to meet you all. Wow, he's a prince? Such army? You didn't tell us you were getting another noble, said Vanessa, especially not a pretty boy. He ain't no noble, you dumbass, said Yami. He's not? Asa says he's honored she thought so. It says he's from humble origins, like he just said, he's from the Forsaken Realm. And quickly everyone gets up in his face, saying hi in their own bizarre ways, until Magna explodes, saying that he has not accepted Asta yet. It's time for the baptism. As Asta tilts his head, and moments later we find everyone uh, outside, as Magna and Asta stand facing each other while everyone else stays on the sideline, sitting on a couch and watching this go down. I'm about to launch an attack, do whatever you can to block it, cut it, since I'm assuming you're like Captain Yami. As he nods, the boy lets his grimoire out of its satchel, taking everyone off guard by the legendary object. He's a four-leaf? Why did a guy like that choose to join us? asked Vanessa. Trust me, I don't know either, said Yami. We're not gonna have a flashback. I choose the Black Bulls. As Asa said these words when he came to be selected, everyone was left completely baffled as murmuring spreads and Fernando and Gordon got hopeful. You were aware you are choosing the weakest squad, right? asked Nozel. This choice can't be taken back. Asta is surprised, smiling, and he says, I guess we have different definitions of the word weak. What's, what's that smug little smile for? said Jack. God damn it. Whatever. Don't build that sword. I want to cut it myself later. I don't plan on it. So, may I join? <laughs> Make it worthwhile for me, alright? said Yami. But the turn also starts walking off as he nods, and he would see Yuno who he nods to, and Yuno does the same back at him. We then return to present time as Asta draws his blade, and Mana would think, Fuck, oh, just my day. I challenged some goddamn prodigy, didn't I? 
However, he digs his feet in and forms a fireball and a fire bat, which he puts everything into before then batting it with all his strength. However, stepping forward, Asta does the most gentle swing downward, timing just when his blade would reach the attack perfectly, thus halving it. The remains of the attack leave a trail behind as it hears the ground before fading and he puts away his blade. That was so manly. It's kind of surprising since you look so effeminate. Thank you. Does this mean I passed? Definitely. Welcome to the squad, man. Gathering to them, his seniors will congratulate him with Karmi offering Asta a cupcake, which he takes, and Mamna gives him a black bull robe. Hmm. Well, I'm at it. Seeing the makeshift kimono Asta has on, she marks it with the black bull mark, and Asta looks at this amazed. And just to explain, by the way, Asta does have long hair like Yorichi, which he ties. His normal attire consists of a long red sleeve turtleneck, uh, black shoes, uh, white shorts, and a large cloth tied around his waist to mimic a kimono. And he then said, wait a minute. Going up to Vanessa, he grabs her by the shoulder saying, can you do me a favor, senpai? Well, aren't we being honest? Oh, no, no, not that. C could you make me something? Vanessa says it depends on what it is. And moments later, we see Asta um, now standing and wearing the kimono that he has given instructions from Vanessa to make. And she put, uh, she put the black bull marking on the kimono as well. Ooh, is that some foreign design? Let's look. I don't know, it just, it just always feels right when I'm wearing clothes like these. Now I know for a fact he's from here, you know. It's a kimono, thought Yami. Did he lose his memories or something? Welcome to the Black Bulls officially, little buddy. Thank you. From afar watching Otto be Noel as she stood on the rooftop, flipping her hair back. Hmm, I hate him. The moment Magna gets the chance to, he would then take Asta uh, for a tour of the ever revolving house, showing him their own sand, dining area, and the girls' area, which is blocked by vicious traps i found this really hilarious when i was reading the manga again now lastly he is then brought before the cage of beasts oh and then there's oh there you are as he turns manda would see noel make her entrance so this is where you were huh asta meet your comrade she's a newbie just like you approaching noel asta would then hold his hand up with noel backing up with a blushing face leaving asta worried as he asks if she's sick i simply refuse to touch summoners with poultry magic oh i see we're not gonna get along then well, my standing is just higher. I hail from the Silver Royal family. I still surprised as this means that she's actually got like lineage. She's not just like a noble noble. She's like actual royalty. But he pays no mind to this and turns asking Mana if they can continue with the tour. Sure thing, I was going to show you your room next. As they walk off, Noel is just left standing there. Watching them leave. Unable to move. And then she thought, he was so pretty. Oh, what are you talking about? She practically slaps herself back to reality and runs off while Asta is brought to his room, which is pretty filthy, but he doesn't care about material possessions and fixes it up as best as he can before going to sleep. The next day, he is woken up by Magna to start doing chores, which includes waking up Yami and then feeding the beasts. And after finishing this is when he heads out to train. And then he steps out. He begins to think, I once said it'd be easy. I guess it's better to start out from the bottom, huh? He would then hear the sloshing of water at this point and make his way to the back of the base and see Noel training and failing hopelessly. Why? Why won't it hit? Why won't any of them hit? Because you don't want them to. Being startled by the voice of Asta, she turns and sees him approaching with a smile so warm that it seemed like a facade. In a panic, she fires an attack at him and Asta stops only waiting for it. Like I said, you don't want it to. The attack is then pulled back towards Noel, who was swallowed up by it and begins to drown as her mana goes out of control. The water ball grows ever large and releases a bunch of large whips that start to even hit the base, and this makes the black bulls all run out right as Asta unsheaths his blade. What the hell happened here, Asyami? Nothing. I'll take care of it, said Asta. My, my, my. That is some serious magic, said Vanessa. God, she's gonna ruin her entire base, said Magna. As he squats down, Asta will then leap to the ball as a whip attacks him, but he cuts and bursts it to steam. With this, I don't know why the hell I said that so weird. He bursts it to steam. Steam, my bad. With this having stopped his momentum, he creates a slight foothold of flames and jumps again. Ooh, not bad, said Vanessa. He knows how to adapt. Sun magic. Beneficent radiance. As the dragon forms once again, it wraps around him, changing his velocity and speed as he is spun, disappearing and appearing above the clump of magic water in a massive sun wheel that splits the water as it explodes to steam and is then blown away. 
and he then uses another foothold to speed towards the fallen Noel, catching her and landing with a crash that tears the ground beneath him. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief that he safely got her, and they gather as she coughs up water and slowly opens her eyes to see Asta, who asks if she's okay. In a panic, she turns red as Asta lets her down, and yet she cannot stand at this point, feeling weak at the knees just from general fear and trauma of certain things like this having come up before. Here it comes. Now they're just gonna think of me as an imbecile. And I tried so hard. That was some awesome magic. The starter Noel looks up as Magna says that she has a lot of mana, um, and honestly, everyone is complimenting her as Asta and Vanessa help her up, and the latter is saying that she would just need some practice, but she would eventually get this down. She looks so dumbfounded for you, Magna. You lost control of your magic. The Black Bulls are known as a group of failures. We don't give a damn. She can only feel happy to hear such comforting words. She starts to tear up, and just like that, she gets her second chance to introduce herself properly with everyone present. Wait, what did you mean by I didn't want it to hit? asked Noel. Your mana may be great, but your intent is unfocused. You seem to be wrestling with many demons, said Asta. I noticed you close your eyes when you fire a spell. It's like rejecting your own target, said Vanessa. Noel, stumped by this, didn't even realize she always had been doing this, but Vanessa promises to help her with controlling this bizarre habit that she has built up. Clearly due to a lot of trauma. I'm going to have another time skip. Gathered at the uh, dining table, everyone is eating, messing about. When Fenor will then lean over the table saying, Just how many missions have you taken in the past three days? Approximately ten. You seem pressed. What? No, I'm I'm impressed, says Fenor. Just aren't you tired? You work way too hard, said Vanessa. You gotta relax, you know? I think we've all relaxed enough as it is, don't you think? These words tug them as they look to Asta. He seems like a version of what they could have been, more motivated, brimming with a passion to be a knight. Next time, take me with you then, asked Luck. Sure. You don't leave me out, said Noel. You're all free to join, but I think you've all gotten too comfortable with being called failures for the knight order. I came here to become Wizard King, so as hard as it might be, I will make the Black Bull shine. At this point, they're just captivated, but also, like, his charisma is crazy, but his bowl is even more crazy. Only for this moment to be ruined as Yami and Magna barge in naked, forcing the girls to cover their eyes. Oh, Vanessa ain't gonna cover shit. She looking at all of that except for Magna's. And then Magna would say, hey guys, so we have a mission. What the hell is wrong with you two, yells Noel. Oh, don't, don't be such a prude, Yami says. The mission Yami uh, mentioned to them later on, after they put some goddamn clothes on, would have Asta, Noel, and Magna going to hunt down some boars. And Asta rides his own broom as he stands on it while it flew through the sky while Noel is forced to hang on Magna's crazy cyclone as it goes wild. Hey, calm down. Even a chicken could fly better than you, Vagabond. The hell you say? You don't need to ride my baby. Well, you know, you can't control your magic, so that's why you have to. Shut up. Guys, I think we have more to deal with than just boars, said Asta. As the two stop arguing, they finally notice. They see something bizarre far ahead and land before the village of Sashi, covered by a blanket of mist. Quickly, Asta unsheathes his blade and swings down, not emanating heat, but releasing pure pressure that blows open the path as he yells for them to run through quickly. And as he does so, the path then closes, and they also, of course, got through before it did. And Asta breathes flames and speeds away ahead, leaving behind a trail of flames wherever he stepped until he reached the town square and sees something he could not forgive. As an icicle nears the village chief, all he could do was just get in front of his grandson, when an arm then reaches out catching this attack as a violent leftover wind blows on his face. Everyone gasps as Asta crushes the icicle and stands before the villagers, pointing his blade at Heath and his men. You ruined my schedule, said Heath. It's a magic night. We're saved. Grandpa. The young boy hugs his granddad as the man thanks Asta who says that they can relax now. This won't take long. As he raises his hand over his grimoire, he summons a valley, like a whole, um, not valley, a volley, I don't know why I said valley. He summons a volley of icicles above the villagers that begin to descend at incredible speed. Flame magic, explosive scattershot, sun magic, magnificent radiance. As Magna and Noel arrive, the senior Black Bull fires attack after attack that blew away these icicles while over the villagers forms a flaming halo as they slowly start to steam and their bruises are healed. Their cuts, everything is healed while Asta dashes forward. I'll lead them with you. God is said Magna. As he nears the enemies, however, a blast of mist is hurled at him by Mana and he thrusts, blowing this away and sending the mage flying by a heat wave that burns his garments off. 
He's not to be taken lightly, thought Keith. And in that same instance, though, Asta appears behind him, knocking out his subordinates with a hit to their noggin using his hilt before he swings down at Heath, who barely lunges forward, avoiding his swing. Uh, by forward, I mean like Asta was slicing at him from the back, so he jumped forward away from him. And as he lunges forward, he avoids the swing and even casts and releases a massive point blank iceberg. Even with all that power, he's still inexperienced, thought Heath. However, the giant iceberg is then split in two by a trail of flames carried by Asta's blade as he blitzes Heath appearing before him and swinging up at his torso, which is slit, exploding with blood, and he falls and Asta sheaths his blade. Is anyone hurt? He asks. No, thank you. We owe you our lives. You saved us. It's no problem, he said, as he then turned around to face his comrades, and Noel then says he's pretty cold for just running away like that. And then she then starts to actually notice something, and running up to him, she says, Are you blushing? I'm not used to being complimented like this. He's so adorable, thought Noel. As he laughs, Mama then says this is the most bizarre quirk someone like him could have. And Asta, of course, can handle compliments, but he just, like, saved these people. And while being told he was, you know, amazing, had amazing abilities, has made him embarrassed before, he got used to it until now. He believes no one should have too much power, so it makes him feel inadequate. People were praising him for his power, even though he just saved their lives. Yeah, this Asta, this version of Asta is a little bit of a weird guy. However, as everything seemed to calm down, a massive explosion of mana is released from Heat and his men, and his remora floats up with Asta grabbing the wall and jumping back, and icicles explode from their bodies before shattering and taking them with the explosion. They self destruct this, says Noel, himself and his men. These bastards have no care for human life, said Asta. Everyone was left shocked and horrified by this ending, but it wasn't over as something then lands on Asta's head, taking him by surprise. Noel would say, What the? Time skip. With this bird having been brought, uh, this bird having brought a certain stone, they send it to the magic investigation department as well as what remained of the criminals, and this earns them an overall 10 stars, bringing them to a negative 20. And then uh, after Asta, Vanessa, and the world go shopping, Asta does more missions until they are called to a dungeon. The sound of steps are heard as the Black Bulls step out of a tunnel, that being Asta, Noel, and Luck. And as they step into this new dungeon, they're left amazed by the amount of mana in the air alone. Along with them also came Nero, who was the magic bird they had just named, and they made their way in. When Noel then looks around, amazed, but then she steps on a certain pile and activates a trap, as she gets startled by an explosion of ice that is hurled at her by artificial magic, uh, artificial magic circle, let's say. But appearing before her, Asta holds his pointer finger out, and as soon as he makes contact, a heat wave melts this all to nothing, releasing a slight shock wave as Noel falls to her butt, and Asta would then turn, asking if she was okay. Uh, well, of course, I just misstepped. I can sense it much better now, but there are traps everywhere, said Asta. Ooh, that's fun. How about this one, y'all's look, as he then runs to and steps on a trap, willingly releasing a massive wind tornado and then a fire beam, and so much that Asta has to fend off, but he does it with ease, that Noel is pissed off. Would you stop doing that already? <laughs> uh, the look on your face, man. This is fun. Your sword's really cool, Asta. It's almost like you're erasing mana. Ooh. He at the moment then senses something and creating his lightning boots, he darts off, leaving the wall just completely baffled. Like this guy is your senpai. And while he runs away, Luck would say, You guys go ahead and explore the dungeon. Something interesting just came up. As he disappears, soon from their sight, Noel goes into a rage and steps on a trap again with Asta backing away and dodging a vine that would proceed to grab a hold of Noel while it was trying to attack him. And then she's grabbed and held up by many other, you know, vines and a giant plant monster uproots itself looking to gobble her up. The piercing sound at that moment is then heard as Asta breathes in and disappears appearing before the creature mid-air and he swings down releasing an invisible yet piercing heat wave that splits it in two before it bursts into flames and then ash in an instant until Noel is dropped. Asta lands, sheathing his blade and helping her up as she says, I still can't, how can you move like that? It's no worries. You'll be able to do the same thing soon. Just keep up with the senpai's regiment and we'll see. Uh, she nods, but then they both feel a great source of mana and the voice of Yuno is heard with the two turning around to see him descending from a tunnel using his wind arc on which stand Mimosa and Klaus. The Golden Dom team was here. What a coincidence, said Yuno. 
As they land and the arc disappears, the two simply stare at each other with a smile until Klaus would then speak. Why did you attempt to jump in for? Our mission is to capture the treasure. Don't waste our time. My, my, if it isn't Noel. Noel then sees them and realizes that Mosa is present, and you know, this is her cousin, and Mosa said that she missed her. I haven't seen you since the last noble gathering. Yeah, uh, yes, some things came up. I heard the Black Bulls were a barbaric group. Are you okay? She asked. Of course I am. We even heard. We earned. Uh, does it even matter? Asta earned us 10 stars, but. Oh, still, what about you guys? 10 stars? You truly expect us to believe that, shouts Klaus? You don't need to believe it, but it is true, said Asta. Always trying to hide the truth. You truly fit in with those miscreants, said Klaus. Asta with the kind of smile then says, You know? Yeah, I know, said you know. Uh, this guy uh, who didn't choose to come into the Golden Dawn, that's my brother, and you're currently talking to him, senpai. Upon hearing this, Klaus and Mimosa are shocked, realizing that this means he also has a four leaf like you know. And Mimosa, while she congratulates him on re receiving such a power or responsibility, only hears Klaus say that it doesn't matter. You are a commoner. That will never change. Whatever you have to tell yourself, said Asta, as he then held his hand out, summoning his grimoire as it flips and stops, summoning a dragon made of flames that towers over all of them, leaving them amazed by how compact of a construct it is. Asta then jumps on it while grabbing a blushing Noel before setting her down and saying, I'll meet you at the treasure room. Is that a declaration, as you know? Of course. We're still rivals, right? With the roar, his dragon then flies off, as you know says, they should hurry up before they lose to him. Lose? As if. Momota. With a nod, she activates her magic and ex uh, excavates the entire area out, reconstructing it into an advanced uh, holographic looking map, allowing them to directly see where the treasure room actually was. Using this, they uh, get there by using Yuno's magic and they land being within walking distance and Mosa said look, they now stare down the giant gate to the treasure room. However, just then from nowhere, mineral spikes stab Mimosa from behind with the two men turning with the gas as she falls. Mimosa, what? Who are you? Yells Klaus, with him now seeing Mars making his way over on a path of minerals. Who are you to stand in my way? Move, said the diamond mage. The huge amount of mana he exerted was enough to let them know this man was strong, but they weren't just going to run away at that moment. Meanwhile, Asta and Noel run in on luck being suffocated by smoke magic, and as they fall from a tunnel, Noel, however, feeling as though she had done nothing through all of this, points her staff forward, saying, Catch me. With the knot, Asta would then trust her, catching her as they land, and when she does, she gains um, footing when she's put down, and she casts a spell, releasing an explosion of waves that then surround Luck, taking the form of a spear uh, that cuts off Lotus's connection to the construct that was suffocating him, thus releasing the boy, as Noel would then be surprised that she actually did it. But Asta takes off instantly, unsheathing his blade as he appears right behind Lotus, swinging down. Sun magic. Dragon's dance. An explosive heat wave releases from uh, Lotus, whose eyes go blank as he starts to fall forward. Where the hell did you come from? As he thrusts to the floor, Asta would then put away his blaze, asking, Look, are you- What are you doing? What are you talking about? We just saved you, said Noel, with her undoing her spell, as Luck walks to Asta, saying, I would not lose. I didn't lose. Bring him- In that instant, Asta slaps Luck. Noel worries a fight might break out as Luck looks back up at Asta holding his cheek and he had never seen the serene Asta so not pissed or like mad but so concerned like he was legit about to burst into tears for him. Get a hold of yourself you moron. What kind of knight would I be if I left my comrade to die huh? Didn't you join the bulls for a reason? Asta. Why was I so worried mom wouldn't accept me Luck thought. She's not even here. I have them too. I have friends, right? Slapping himself with both hands, Luck would then focus. Sorry. Thanks for that. Dude, I don't like hitting you. Don't start thinking I do. Oh, but I want you to hit me. You never agree on spars or anything. You idiot. It's because he can see your intentions all over your face. We all can, said Noel. <laughs> maybe I'm a little bit too obvious. It's not a maybe. It's definitely you little sociopath, said Noel. At that moment, though, Luck's enhanced sense of magic detention starts to alert him as he tells his friends, The Golden Dawn, they're gonna die. Look on Asta's face turns to that of horror. What did you just say? Cut into you know, we see it with a heavy breath, he now faces Mars alone as Klaus is preoccupied with a mineral clone while Mimosa is trying to heal herself. I told you to give up. I'm not giving up. I'm not moving from this spot. Until I take you down, you know, said. 
and so be it, said Mars, with him raising his hands to the sky, and he created a giant blade, mineral magic, Leviathan. In the same instance that it formed, his blade starts swinging down as Klaus can only uh, yell for Unit to dodge, but he does not, only looking at the attack, trying to muster all of his strength. But then he thought, crap. Hmm. It's gotten warm, thought Mars. His Leviathan in that moment is then shredded to pieces by throws of flames as a blur moves towards him until Asta is right in midair before him. What do you think you're doing to my rival? With the thrust, Asta sends Mars flying as even when he created his armor to combat this, it burst to pieces with him coughing up blood until he slammed into the walls of the dungeon, leaving a crater in it. He, he heard him. He actually got him, said Klaus. With an explosive kick filled with lightning, Luck then blows off the head of the mineral cone attacking Klaus, surprising him, but he recognizes Luck as someone who caused trouble during the last entrance exams for being strong, but also just for being disruptive. And finally, Noel arrives, instantly running to Mimosa and casting her Sea Dragon's Cradle, but making it more refined to protect her specifically. This time, I'm going to be the one to protect you, whether you would like it or not, said Noel. Sorry, it seems I'll have to rely on you. And Noelle is happy that she's being relied on. This is a great moment for her. I, you know, it is what it is. You know, she getting their development. You know. Once the dust clears from Asta's attack, we see Mars marching forward using a bridge from across the water in the area. You know, I'll destroy you. Try as you might, you can't because I'm the man who will become the Wizard King. Wizard King? What a ridiculous, lofty dream, said Klaus. Yeah, and so what? The more he says it, the more it sounds like he's actually gonna do it, said Noelle. Bursting with flames, Mars begins to heal himself, which talks, uh, shocks everyone as it means he has dual types of magic, but it shouldn't be possible. Along with this, he releases an army of clones as Asta tells Nero who was sitting atop his head to fly off, and she does as Asta gets in a fighting stance, and Yuno comes to stand by his side, starting to explode with wind. A halo of flames then, a uh, halo of flames, like it's a halo made of flames, then begins to form over his head, and his injuries slowly heal. Damn it, I don't want to owe you more debt, says you know. Tell that to someone who cares, little brother. You're always like this. I'm your rival, damn it! With a step, they both rush off, with Asta taking the lead, and Noel attacks clones with blast upon blast, actually pushing them back, but not destroying them. <laughs> Leave some for me. With these words, Luck then joins in, using his lightning speed to crush them with his boots and claws. Will the Clover Mages gain the treasure? Will you not be able to keep up? Find out in the next part of Black Clover. I hope y'all enjoyed this. It was your boy, Pizza with this, and I'm gone. Peace. Take a seat, you cannot stand it. All I know the flow hotter than a scotch bunny.